Hi, everyone. I'm your host, Carolina Moreno, and welcome to Build. You may recognize Justina Machado from hit shows like Six Feet Under and Jane the Virgin. But the Puerto Rican star also shines as tenacious single mother and army vet Penelope Alvarez in Netflix's One Day at a Time. The critically acclaimed series' third season premieres this Friday. Let's take a look, peek. You both know what anxiety and depression are, right? Well, I have that. And I didn't want to tell you because I don't want to freak you guys out. Are you okay? Are you not happy? Oh, honey, it's nothing to do with unhappiness. It's a chemical imbalance. And it runs in our family. And it's nothing to be ashamed of. Even though I'm ashamed of it. <laughs> but that's something I'm trying to end with me because I'm fine now. And you're going to be fine too. Wait, is this why you freak out on me all the time? No, that's me being legit mad at you because you're a punk. <laughs> <Dang>. <laughs> Please welcome Justina Machado. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I definitely chose a, a more serious, somber clip. Um, and, but I think it's, it represents something that I love about sitcoms and One Day at a Time in general, which is that it, it really touches on subjects like with a lot of heart, but a lot of humor. Um, and one of the things that we've seen is Penelope go through her mental illness journey mm -hmm. a little bit, like accepting it and seeking help. Um, one, of the, one of the best episodes I think last season was a really episode where Penelope goes off her medication. She feels a lot of shame. And we see her go through a really dark place. Um, what was that filming that episode for you? Like? Uh, it was exciting to film an episode like that, to film an episode that uh, was so close to the writers that wrote it. And also to know that people were going to be able to see themselves up there. You know, if they if they do suffer from depression and anxiety so that they don't feel like they're alone, so that maybe somebody can like when I made the character Lydia, she understood more after that. You know, she goes to church and she's like, I don't know what to do with my daughter. And just understanding that her daughter has to be on this medication and it's not something shameful. So I, I love filming things like that. I love to be able to, you know, my, I find like. I come from the, dra the drama world, right? Yeah. So the fact that I'm on a comedy, I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I can I do like, both. People are laughing at me, what? <laughs> so it's great when I get to have, to bring my, my drama chops into, you know, such an incredible show. I love it. I, I never get scared of anything they give me. I, n I don't think any of us do. We're just excited to have such incredible material. And really going, and you've spoken about this before, really talking about what it means to see a Latina character especially go through this. I think in our community, sometimes there is so much stigma and there is so much uh, shame around seeking help. And there's so many people who suffer in silence. Like, what does it mean to you? Or have you had anybody come to you, ask, you know, telling you about what it meant to see another Latina kind of go through this? All the time. All the time on my, you know, if somebody will DM me or, you know, somebody sends me a message on Twitter. There, it's always thank you so much uh, for all of that, for representing it. And it's true. I mean, in my family, if I ever say to my mom, Mom, you know, why don't you go to therapy? Nah, what am I going to go do, tell yeah. somebody my problems for? You I'm know what crazy. I mean? Yeah. Or like my brother, hey, why don't you do that? No, nobody wants to do yeah. that. So it's, it, and my mom's not even that old. She's like 64 years old, you yeah. know, and she doesn't want, or 66, I don't know. <laughs> Something like that. Sorry, mom. But she I know, sorry, mom, <laughs> but I'm making you younger. She doesn't want to, you know, do things like that. So it is a huge stigma in our community. Yeah. There, it's all like, why go tell somebody that? So if we could, you know, let people know that it's okay. Yeah. It's good to talk to people. It's good to get it out and not feel ashamed, you know, and, and to resolve things. Yeah. And one of the things that I always tell people is that, uh, aside from all of these important things, I think that One Day at a Time is one of the most relevant shows on television right now. I think we, you deal, you know, you see some of the subjects talked about are things that Americans are grappling right now with, right? We talk about gun control, PTSD, and healthcare for veterans. Um, we talk, you guys talk about xenophobia, immigration, li literally everything that, you know, right straight from the headlines. and. Um, how do you how do you strike that balance between comedy and drama, especially with things that are dividing our country so much? Well, I think that so many of the things that you just mentioned are things that a Latino family would talk about all the time. That's what's so awesome about this show is that it's authentic, it's real. This is uh, you. 
we have always had conversations about immigration, conversations about racism, conversations about, you know, maybe not PTSD, you know, yeah. in my family. But all those conversations, um, I think that has a lot to do with the writing. They're just incredible. They know how to weave comedy with the drama. And it's just, it, the show is so honest that you don't really have to work that hard with that amazing writing. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like you have to work that hard with. But I... I think it's also in the classic form of Norman Lear. Mm -hmm. Do you know? Because Norman Lear revolutionized television and all of his shows had that kind of thing. Had They talked about the issues at hand, but they did it with humor and heart. And it's just a beautiful balance that our writers and the actors have learned, you know, how to strike. Yeah. And one of the things that I, was, I always tell people, you know, I think as a, as a Latina, but somebody who's relatively light skin. I always kind of try to find myself in people like, oh, Miranda and Lizzie McGuire or, or you know, other characters that maybe aren't Latino, but I could try to relate to. And I think seeing the Alvarez is on screen, you know, was I'm like, oh, I can see, I can see myself. I can see those conversations that I have with my family, with other generations in my family um, who maybe don't understand certain things. Um, but at the same time, I think there's this, there's this notion of the show as like a Latino show. This is a show for Latinos, but I also, yeah, right? I hate that. I really do. <laughs> Why do you hate that? Well, because I grew up watching white people. I didn't, I didn't say, yeah. oh, that's a white people show. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like, you know, I loved, I loved full, uh, you know, what was that? Full growing house. pains. No, oh, growing pains. I was a little bit too old for that. <laughs> I loved growing pains. I loved, you know, uh, I can't even, the, it, what? But thank you. Ties. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you know it, girl. <laughs> family tie, uh, family ties, uh, you know, family all of that. <laughs> None of that. It's ridiculous. I hate that, that it's a Latino show. Yes, I'm proud that we're changing a narrative. I'm mm -hmm. proud that we're out there putting that out there. But it's not just, you know, it's like when Roseanne came back. Yeah. And, I, and I really used to love Roseanne. I loved that show. Um, and when she, it came back, then it was like, finally, a working class family on television. It's like, no, there has been a working class family on television. <laughs> and, and learn how to identify with us as we had to mm -hmm. our whole lives. Right. We're not that different. We're human beings, you know? Mm -hmm. We're going to deal with things differently, you know, but we're still a family that love each other, that have issues, all of that. So, I mean, I'm proud that it is an incredible Latino show, but it is not just a Latino show. Mm -hmm. We're American. Mm -hmm. So and, you know what I'm saying? And I was going to say, because the, the, the season three like um, promo says, an American familia. I love that. And I, I love yeah. that. And I feel like that feel like that's Netflix saying, OK, this just happens to be a show, an American show with Latinos in it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. A great show, actually, yeah. with Latinos in it. And that's Thank God. and that's so important, I think now, right? If we if we think about the way the Latinos are being spoken about in, in you know in the political stage, absolutely, the way that you know that they feel not heard, uh, everything, you know, uh, uh, you know, there's an attack on brown people, you know, period, right? There's just right now with this administration, and so it is important to feel that. I mean, that's why that immigration episode is so is is so important, you know, that. Um, the, the episode that we have where they, where they tell um, Alex, go yeah. back to Mexico, build the wall. I mean, that happened and to my best Cuban. friend's kid. <laughs> you know, they don't care. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They don't care. The, uh, we're all the, the same to those kind of people, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really important to have this show, something that somebody can see, maybe a kid that got told that the other day mm -hmm. and say, okay, this is how we're dealing with it. This, is, does, this just doesn't happen to me. This is a thing that's happening. And I think something that you guys do that's so rare is you do take a political stance. Like as a show, so to speak, like the characters themselves have their own thoughts and they, they have their own opinions about what's going on. And like you said, in that immigration show, there was a whole storyline, right, with um, Rita's character as well and her citizenship. And I mean, I don't want to spoil it for people who haven't watched it, second, but... That's okay. It's the second season. <laughs> second season. You guys should have watched it already. You should okay? watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but but they, but it is something that you guys take seriously on top of the the you know yes. being authentic. Yes, yes, because you know we have to. We have a responsibility. We really do, and we understand that. We understand that, and and the the fact that it's done so beautifully <laughs> just makes it a whole lot easier. We're we're saying things. We're making a difference, and we're also entertaining. So that's fantastic. Yeah, and you guys have 
a, like a bunch of guest stars. This, I mean, it starts like starts with a bang. Like the season three, you yeah. guys have Gloria Stefan, yeah, Melissa Fumero, That's Stephanie right. Beatrice. That's like, right. All in one episode. <laughs> And I remember when Brooklyn Nine-Nine premiered, I spoke to Stephanie and she was telling me about how her and Melissa would talk, you know, oh my God, it's just going to be one of us. Because that's usually how it goes, right? It's only one Latina who's cast, you know. That's and true. That's, that's pretty, that is so true. It's usually just one. And I mean, back in the day, they can't really say this anymore because they can't get away with things <laughs> like this anymore. But literally they would say, no, we already have a person of color. We're gonna, no. You, I I've mean, heard that a million times. Oh, a million times they used to say that. Can she get, can Justina be seen for this? Well, we already have so-and-so in mind. So it's like one, they just want one, yeah. you know? They can't say that anymore, but so, but it's it's changing, and that's great, and that's why Brooklyn Nine Nine is so amazing. And how, but how did it feel? Like, did it feel as momentous as it felt as a viewer to see all of you guys in the same scene, screen, like? Everybody had a different character and personality, and you mean when we were there, the, yeah, the when you episode were in, when, when you I were shot on with that, yeah. Oh yeah, it was awesome. Are you kidding me? I'm I'm sitting there and I'm looking at Gloria Stefan and Rita Moreno standing next to each other, singing. And then they're singing. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, this is my life. <laughs> This is amazing. <laughs> and my mother and stepfather flew in from Chicago. <laughs> Seriously, they were Just like, what, Gloria Esteban? They were like, oh, yes. So it was, it's, it's, it's great. That's what's so beautiful. And we also have Danny Pino this year. I don't know if people know Danny. I mean, he's fantastic. He's on the Mayans right now. And uh, just to be able to see these men play these parts, really, and these women, uh, parts that they're not usually given. Mm -hmm. You know, so many times uh, Latin men, it's like they're a cop or the bad guy. Yeah. You know, like, when do we get to see them actually be a man, mm -hmm. you know, like layered? So this is something that our show does beautifully. It lets people be people. And what's one of the things that I think um, is more exciting about season three? Because we saw, we saw Penelope grow um, in her love life, too, last season. And I think there, you know, we saw that there might be somebody else this season. Yeah, there is. <laughs> yes. I don't know how much I can give away, but, uh, no, but what... It's a new love interest, okay. yeah. Well, so what's most, what was the most exciting part of, for you for season three and Penelope, Penelope's arc? Um, just... I, I, loved every, I loved it, but I really do love the finale of season three. And you'll have Ooh. to see it, yeah. <laughs> For, for, for Penelope, mm -hmm. she has a beautiful arc this year. It's just, you know, a woman coming into her own. I really, really love that. And one of the things that, as a viewer, too, I feel like, oh, I see time passing, because just Alex, you know, the... I know. <laughs> I just you see how Alex big he is grow. Now? <laughs> <laughs> Does it feel like a family to you, too, now that you guys have been spending so much time together and you're, you know... Yeah, it felt like a family from the first day. It really did. That was one of the things that I think Sony and Netflix said, oh, my God, it feels as if you guys have been together forever. And that has a lot to do with the fact that it was such incredible material, and everybody realized that, so... It's not often that that kind of stuff is handed to you. You know, it's not often as a Latina actress that where, like, they don't try to put you in a box, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I always say there's a bunch of boxes. There's, like, the over-sexualized Latina. Yeah. There's the asexual cop. There's the, the, the suffering mother. Feisty. There's the, the feisty best friend, you know, <laughs> with the stupid one-liners. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like to be able to have all of this, because we have that. Yeah. I mean, we have all of that stuff. But still, it's written real. And, um, uh, yeah, I think that we realized that right away, and, and we were going to make it work. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and now that season three is right around the corner, I want to talk about last year when all the fans were going crazy because it seemed like it just it seemed like every Netflix show was being renewed <laughs> except One Day at a Time. And you had Gloria, the showrunner for the for for One Day at a Time, tweeting out for people to rewatch it. You had people tweeting at F Netflix to 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 get it renewed. You had Vulture, you know, do a piece, entire piece about Vulture. Vulture is so kind to us. Yeah, I, yeah, they're so great to us. They did a whole piece saying why, you know, pretty much detailing why the show deserved a third season. How was that waiting period for you? How did you how did you how did you do Deal with it. The first season, the first year when we were waiting for the second season, I was a wreck. I was like, oh my God, they're not going to pick us up. You know, I've, I have PTSD from being in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm like this. I'm, I'm like, oh, you know how this goes. Happen. It's going to. And then the second year, I wasn't so worried because I said, it's such a great show. I do believe that it will come back. And if it doesn't, 
I know that we did such an incredible job, just like after the third season. You know, of course I wanted to come back. Of course we'd love to do it for many more years. But if that were not to happen, it, I mean, it's a pretty phenomenal show and it's, I'm, I'm incredibly proud of it. I've made television history twice, in my opinion. Six Feet Under and now One Day at a Time, you know? <laughs> so, okay. And I think you just mentioned PTSD from Hollywood. I have PTSD from <laughs> Hollywood. So if somebody goes, hey, did you research PTSD? I'm like, yeah, all my years in Hollywood. <laughs> I got P I mean, I don't mean to make, I don't mean to belittle the yeah, PTSD, yeah, yeah. but truly, you know, the, yeah. I do have a little bit of that. There's a little bit of that feeling where well, I've been through enough, you know, of this scenario. You just think that know. it's all going to end, you know? Yeah. It's like, oh, they're going to cancel it. They're going to cancel it. They're not going to give us a chance. But the fact that the National Hispanic Media Coalition wrote that letter and, you know, Gloria Calderon Kellett and all of them, and then all of these people came behind us, and it did make a difference to Netflix, you know? Because it's not that Netflix doesn't love our show. It's yeah. At the end of the day, it's about numbers. Yeah. And we really have to get more people, more eyes on our show. And maybe if they realize that it's not just a Latino show, <laughs> that it's actually here, here. an incredible show <laughs> that American anybody show. can relate to, then, you know, that might um, make them feel a little better. Great. Um, so I think we're about to, to open it up for questions from the audience, and I feel like we might have a few. So uh -huh. does anybody have any questions? Yes, we have somebody with a microphone. Okay. Um, my question is, after so many years in Hollywood and the trauma that you just experienced. <laughs> I had good times, too. I, I was, I was, that was a joke. It's too is, late, Penelope. What is one piece of advice you would tell your younger self? One piece of advice. There's so many pieces of advice that I would tell myself, but I think... The first thing that popped into my head is that it's not life or death. That, you know, you not getting something doesn't have anything to do with your, whether you're talented enough or not. Mm -hmm. It really has everything to do with the project. You might look too much like the person who is the star of the show. You might not fit in this way. You might, there's so many reasons. And also, like, don't make up your mind before they make up your mind. Like, don't say, oh, I'm not going to go in for that because uh, they're, I'm, not, I'm not right. They're not going to like me. Because you, no, you have no idea how many times I've gone in for something and I got it. And I didn't think that I was going to get it. Or they remember me for something else, and they bring me back for that. Or I get another project. So, you know, just uh, live in the moment as much as you can. And I know that's really hard, because when you're really young, like, everything is forget about it. If I would have <laughs> known back then, what I'd, I, I would have been like, how long is it going to take me? I'd be like, forget <laughs> it. I'm going back to Chicago. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? Um, okay, well, thank you so much, Justina, for, <laughs> for being here. I love talking to you. Um, and yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs>